Hi everyone, welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is the YouTube channel that you come to every single week to find out how you can create holistic success in your life. We bring on amazing guests from all over the world. We find out about their, their journey, their expertise, their, their experiences in life. We dive deep and we figure out what are the exact steps they took to create success in their life so we can follow in their footsteps and achieve the same level of success. I'm Talal, your host, and as always, I'm really excited to have you with me because I have a fantastic guest with me today. Her name is Cindy J. Cadet. She is a mom, she's an author, she's a coach, she's a mommy and me mentor. She is the creator of Doll Girl Academy. Her mission in life is to help the daughters and the moms have a better relationship. She believes that confident daughters make powerful women. She's launched a brand new app, which is called Doll Girl. And it's all focused towards how moms and daughters can have a better, more blissful, enriching relationship. And her strong belief is that success starts with healthy relationships. I believe the same. And this includes obviously your health, your your relationship with other people and your relationship with money. So with that, I'll be welcome. Our guest today, Cindy J. Kadak. Hi everyone. Thanks for being here, Cindy. Thanks for having me on today. Very excited to have you on. Um, Cindy, this is, uh, it's pretty incredible. You have achieved a lot and you're really focusing on um, the daughters and the moms because I know there are lots of children's coaches out there, but I have not met anybody who's specifically concentrating on the relationship with moms and daughters. So can you take us back in time? Tell us a little bit about how you got started on this journey because I know you're a mom yourself. And uh, why did you specifically decide to focus on the relationship between the mom and the daughters? Okay, uh, for sure. So I have actually been working with students since 2005. And um, I know when I was growing up, I actually had a difficult relationship with my own mother. Um, there are things that I wouldn't tell her. And I see that um, actually is still continuing with the children, with the students that I work with. Um, they tell me a lot of different information and I often wonder are they telling their moms? And sometimes I even ask them, you know, have you told your mom? Um, what do your mom think? And usually they're like, oh, I didn't tell my mom. I don't feel comfortable. She doesn't understand me. And it's um, very heartbreaking because I do have a daughter myself. She's seven years old. And um, as I said, I had a difficult relationship with my mom. So I'm trying to um, not continue that family pattern on. So I try to um, give my daughter the space to be open and honest and to um, let her understand that her feelings do matter to me. So I thought maybe I should um, help other moms understand that their daughters are, are, are essentially suffering in silence because there are some things that they do want to tell their moms, but they don't feel comfortable or they, they feel that they'll be judged or that their moms are just not paying attention. So um, I decided that I, want, I would work with moms and daughters to help um, bridge that gap. Awesome. And this is really interesting because a lot of the guests that are pretty much, I think every single guest I've had on, they always talk about the fact that they, the, the particular area or field or domain that they're currently working in stemmed from the fact that they were trying to solve some sort of problem in their own life. They were trying to relieve some sort of pain that they were experiencing. And by going through that journey, they then discovered some way or some some system some medium through which they experience relief from that pain and as a result they then decided to help others because they thought hey i don't want anybody else to suffer because guess what this worked for me surely i can help others help you know with their pain so um it, it seems to be the fact that there's a pattern with with all the people who are actually trying to help others um so yes. that's fantastic yeah yeah, yeah for sure so, Cindy, tell, tell us a little bit about your, your background. I know you've, you're an author, so you've written some books, um, and then you decided to create this amazing app, 
which helps facilitate the, the conversation between the mothers and the daughters. It helps to bridge that relationship. So tell us a little bit about how, how does it all work? Yes, for sure. So um, my daughter, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was having trouble finding um, children's books that she would be able to relate to that were having uh, children of color having fun. So initially I decided that I was going to create one book um, in time for her first birthday as a memory for her to keep. So um, I started off with one book. Um, the series is called the Brownie Kids series. Initially it was called the Brownie Girl series because I have one main character. Her name is Zola and she appears in all three books. So the first one was a family vacation book. Um, showing a family of color, going on vacation, doing different things. And then um, the second book was a daddy-daughter day because um, a lot of the men in, in my community do get a bad rap. So I wanted to show children that, you know, there are um, dads that, that look like their dads that are out there doing um, th different things with their children. So it was a daddy-daughter day at the zoo. And then while I was promoting my first two books, I had a lot of parents ask me what am I going to do for the boys. So I decided to create a friendship book that included two, two boy characters and I actually included my daughter as one of the characters as well. She actually was like a co-creator on that book because she was able to um, tell me what she wanted to look like and, how she, and some of the things that she wanted to wear and some of the activities she wanted to do. So that was a really great bonding process for, for her and I to like come together and, and, and um, do that. Um, I do plan to add more to the series. Um, right now there's three books and I hope to add at least like uh, four or five more books. And during my journey with working with younger children, that's where the book series came in. And then I started to transition and work with the older children. And as I worked with the older children, as I was saying before, they open up to me and they tell me different things. And it's like the kids are suffering in silence, even with the, the stuff that we hear on the news where people are unfortunately taking their own lives or they're just so isolated. And I wanted to um, be a constant um, voice, a constant point of support so they can um, share their voices and, and be able to talk freely and openly about how they're feeling. So there's different features on my app, the Down Girl app, where we're checking in each day. Um, like being aware of how you're feeling and how you can take control of that feeling and not let that feeling overcome uh, you or um, take over your day so you can be productive at school. And there's also some activities that you can do with your, um, like moms and daughters can do together. Um, I mean, there are also activities that moms, I mean, that dads and daughters, because there are some daughters on my app who uh, either are not with their mom or there's some unfortunate circumstance. So there are, the um, activities are parent bonding activities with their children so they can feel open enough to have those conversations with their parents and for their parents to understand where, where they're coming from and how they're feeling and just to build a stronger connection between a parent and child. Awesome. Um, so this is really interesting to me because I, I you know, I, I'm a parent. I, I have two young kids. And um, I have a girl and she's, 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 I, 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 I absolutely love her. Um, and when she was actually born, I was, I was absolutely mortified. And I was like, how am I going to be a dad to a girl? I have no clue. Right. Okay. I, I, I'm lost. Um, and I honestly felt that I don't know, you know, people in the audience, you know, if there are any dads watching this, you know, can you relate, you know, how did, how did you feel when your daughter was born? I mean, you know, it, it it doesn't matter boy or girl, you always, you know, have the certain level of anxiety um, just because you want to do a good job at this thing, which is like yeah. a big thing. Um, yeah. But definitely with girls, I was like, well, you know, I'm a dude like, you know, with a boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we talk about cars, we talk about sports, it'll be good. But like with girls, like, what do you do? Like, how, how does it work? So I'm curious to know, Cindy, how does the relationship between a mother and a daughter is different to the relationship that is there between the father and the daughter? Well, there's definitely a difference because like you said, um, you, because you've been, uh, like you've, you've been through that stage where you were a girl turning into a teenager, turning into a woman, there are things that are very similar in that you're able to talk to your daughter about 
um, fathers, on the other hand, I mean, they were children and they turned into teenage boys versus teenage girls. So it's, it's a unique perspective that each parent does have with the child. But um, at the end of the day, the connection is very strong for both the mom and the dad. And it's very important for the mom and the dad to get to know their child, um, give their child that space that they need to grow and um, just be able to talk about how they feel and help them to be uh, uh, human beings that can understand their feelings because we have a lot of people who grow up, um, they may grow up as adults, but they have a lot of buried feelings inside and sometimes they might lash out or make um, negative decisions. So with my programs, I'm able to help the students open up a little bit more and not bury those feelings and take control of those feelings and not let the feelings take control of them. Oh, awesome. And you know what, I, I have to say, like, you know, now my, my daughter, she's, she's three now. Um, I, I, I can't live without her. Like, like she's everything to me now. Uh, but when she was born, I was mortified. Yeah. <laughs> I really was, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, funny because um, people are like, oh, you're always doing something for mom and daughters. I'm like, because I'm a, a girl mom. Like, if I had a son, I would be able to relate more to, like, a, mm. a mother and son relationship. But because I do have a daughter, it is a lot easier for me to talk about my experience and share my experience with other mothers and daughters because I am living that, yeah. that, that life. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think that's that's fantastic. I, I love the fact that you are openly sharing your own life experiences with other people, uh, because I think that's that's really that's really authentic. That's really pure, yes. but it's also really beautiful because people can genuinely see, you know, how how it was like for you and what you went through, and you can talk talk to them step by step about what Absolutely. their journey was like. So I, I think that's that's fantastic. Um, and the thing is. Um, as a parent, you're always learning, like you should be always learning and it's never too late. Even if you've made a hundred mistakes before, you could always pick up where you are right now and then change the story. It doesn't have to end with the way it started. So it's like, I think parents sometimes feel like, oh, I've already messed her up or I've already messed him up. I'm, it's too late. It's never too late. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how old the, the child is, they will always have that love for their parents and if they're they see that their parents are trying something new they will start to turn around and um, meet them where they're at oh i yo you know what I, I i first of all i love that but it's also completely true so for people in the audience if you are parents uh and and this is something that you you're thinking like how, how does that work well i'll give you an example right now okay uh, cindy i'll share that with you mm -hmm. i came back from work and you know i i've I, I was in charge. Okay. So my, my, my wife, she was, she was out, she was doing her stuff. Um, and I, I, you know, got the dinner ready, sat down with the kids and we were having dinner and obviously they were, they were kind of messing around and I ended up just raising my voice. Mm -hmm. I was tired and just not listening. I just raised my voice a little bit. Um, and then they calmed down. They calmed down. Just quiet. It was just, just silent. So they started eating dinner in silence, which I don't like because I usually like talking about them about their day and what happened, etc. So afterwards, you know, towards the end of the dinner, you know, I, I actually apologize. I'm like, look, I, I was just tired. I'm sorry. I, I, I raised my voice at you. Can you just like, you know, I told you guys to calm down and just sit down and eat your dinner. Um, and they, 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 they actually accepted that. They understood what happened, but it took me, you know, it, it required me to take that step to reach out to them and explain what, 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 what happened, why I raised my voice. Mm -hmm. And then they were fine. I mean, we had a fantastic time afterwards. They, they, you know, I put them to bed and it was, it was great. You yeah. know, yeah, we had bedtime stories. We played games. It was fantastic. I'm so glad you shared that story because some, some parents don't believe in apologizing to their children. And if we want our children to grow up and have um, dignity, dignity and respect for other people, we have to treat them with dignity and respect. And we're, you know, we're, no one's perfect. So there are going to be times where, as parents, we might get frustrated and, and do things, do something that we don't really need to do. But if we go back and make it right and let, the, let our children know, you know, I was having a bad day. I'm so sorry I didn't yell at you or I didn't mean to like ignore you when you were talking to me. I just have a lot going on. The, 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 the children will understand and forgive you. So it's, that, it's so important for parents to 
treat the child like you would want the child to treat anybody else. So it's like, that's super important. I'm so glad you shared that story. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, I, I'll, I'll share a little bit more. What happened was this morning before I was leaving for work, they both came up to me and they wanted to play a game, etc. Pokemon game, by the way, we're high, big in Pokemon. So I was like, well, I, I really can't. Okay, I have, to, I have to do work and then get ready and then go to work. You know, like I, I'm busy right now. But I tell you what, maybe, if, you know, if you get a chance, we'll play it, you know, when, you, when, when I come back. Mm -hmm. um, so like actually after dinner, that's what we did. We did play the Pokemon game. So the, the thing I'm pointing at is the fact that, you know, at that time I did say to my kids, I'm busy, you know, go away, you know, mm -hmm. can't do it. But later on, I did fulfill that promise. I did say, yeah. yes, I promised you this earlier. So no matter what, we are going to do this right now. Yeah, that's so true because the, the children really do hold on to your promises. Even if you think it's something small, they will hold on to it. And it's like, really important to say things and do what you say and mean what you say because they will hold on to it and um, as we grow there are things that will just stay with us from our childhood no matter how old we get and it's important that for parents to understand that the little things do matter mm. and um, like fulfilling the promises that you make your kids even if it's something little is definitely important and that you should definitely um, fulfill your promises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Cindy, I'm actually wondering, you know, what, what, what kind of things have you seen? Like, I know you, you, you work with a lot of people, you've got a mm -hmm. uh, thriving community online, you have lots of people who are using your app, uh, which is called Doll Girl, by the way, for people in the audience, it's called Doll Girl, and you can download it, you can just go on the Play Store or the Apple Store, and you can get it from there. So, uh, Cindy, very quickly, um, what are some of the things that actually act as a force of friction between the, the mother-daughter relationship? What have you seen by working with all these people? I think um, the, the main thing is that the, the child doesn't feel heard. They might be expressing their feelings about something and they just feel like they're being ignored or they're being told what, they are, what they're saying doesn't matter. So that starts to create a division because they, then it's like, if you don't, if you're not listening to me or you don't think what I'm saying matters, then I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I'm not going to tell you how I'm feeling. I'm not going to tell you what's going on. I'm just going to like ignore you. Mm -hmm. And so that's when the, like the, the, the bond starts to, to um, split uh, when the child feels like I talked to my mom and she just doesn't pay me any attention or she tells me what I'm saying is stupid or they, she just doesn't understand me. So I don't even want to talk to her because I don't feel like, no, no matter what I say, it's, it's going to matter to her. So I'd rather just not talk to her. Mm. That's really interesting. So do you feel that this is very unique to the mother-daughter relationship? Or is, is that something that, that is, uh, you know, uh, applied to any parent and child no, relationship? It's, it's, it's really a parent-child relationship. Because um, children do find comfort in their mom or their father, depending on the, the family dynamics. So it's really a child-parent relationship. And sometimes not all homes have both the mom and the dad. So whichever parent that is in the home, that's the parent that they're trying to connect with. And if they feel like they're not being heard or they just don't feel comfortable with their, with their mom or dad, then they start to shut down. And sometimes they make bad decisions um, and it just spirals out of control from there. Mm, okay. Uh, but again, I, I, I just, I just want to clarify this, you know, in, in case something that I am missing, because um, as, as I said before, the whole mother daughter relationship is uh, quite, quite, quite unique, yes, unique sure. uh, mm -hmm. and special and, and especially something very, uh, well, not alien, because obviously, you know, I have a daughter and I, you know, my, my wife, you know, they have a relationship. Um, but, but the sense that it, it's something that I want to understand. More. Yes. So yes. Is, uh, do you feel there are any, any, anything specific between the mother-daughter relations that causes friction? Yes, absolutely. Um, daughters are always watching their moms, whether, however they're talking, like their body images, if their mom is like, oh, I'm fat, or I ate too much this, I ate too much that. Like they're listening to the little things that we might think is not a big deal. So um, the moms are role models for their daughters and they are watching everything that you do. And um, they are going to 
transform and pick up on a lot of the things that you've done and they're either going to copy you or they're going to try to do something completely different and if you want them to kind of mold into uh something uh, if you want them to mold and be a positive force you want to practice positive um positive self-talk uh talk to them about being positive try to try to be positive with them and keeping the atmosphere light and open because um that 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 relationship is a strong relationship they are learning how to become a woman by watching their mom and listening to what their mom or the, the mom, their moms are saying whether it be negative or positive and that does make a really big impact on the girls these days mm, that is so powerful and for the parents in the audience especially if you are a mom and you're watching this i i ask you this are you leading by example absolutely are you being a role model to your child? And if you are a mom, are you being a role model to your daughter? And it's not just do as I say, they're going to do as you're doing. <laughs> so it's not like the, you can't just say, well, you have to do as I say, but then on the side, I'm doing what I feel like doing. They're going to watch what you're doing and then they're going to do exactly what you're doing. Mm, yes, very true. So yeah, there you have it, guys. How important is it to be a role model? to your children? I think that's the question we need to be asking ourselves. How important is it for me to be a role model? How important is it for me to show up every single day as the best version, as the highest version of myself for my children? Mm -hmm. And are we doing that? If not, what does that say about us? Those are the hard questions we need to ask ourselves. Thank you for sharing that with us, Cindy. Um, how can we overcome some of those issues? Um, definitely, like as, as we, we were saying before, apologizing when you know that you either hurt your child's feelings or you did something out of either anger or frustration, definitely apologizing because that helps them to understand that you're not perfect, but you are taking their feelings into consideration. Mm. So definitely apologizing and being thankful for when they do do things. Because I do have a lot of my students, they'll be like, you know, I wash the dishes and I clean this and I clean that. Nothing I ever do is good enough. And it, like my mom never says thank you, but she always expects me to say thank you. So like you're saying, leading by example, it's like we want our kids to do certain things, but they are looking for us to show our gratification, show that what, what they're doing matters. So whether it be cleaning the house or taking out the trash or doing things around the house or even having a, a dialogue and letting them know what's going on at school, if they had like a bad day at school, listen to what your child is saying and empathize with them and not just brush them off and be like, oh, you'll get over it. You know, it's not that serious. Because what you might not think is that not that serious to them, it's like everything in the world. So try to just take that extra time to help your, your daughter understand what she says matters. Mm, that is so deep. And for, you know, people in the audience, I think this is really important. The fact that, you know, our, our children, we love our children. They matter to us. They obviously matter to us, right? Okay. We care for them. We love them, etc. But the real question is, do they feel loved do they feel like they matter because we can say we can say that yeah you matter to me i love you mm -hmm. but then it needs to be reflected through our actions absolutely so i think that's so important you're so right like when they do do something good are we celebrating it are mm -hmm. we highlighting it as an achievement mm -hmm. are we yeah. are we yeah are we congratulating them mm -hmm. Because they feel like if they do something not so good, you're the first one to say, oh, what are you doing coming down on them? But when they're striving to do things to, to, to make you happy, it's like, oh, that's what you're supposed to be doing. And it's just like, well, what does that mean? Like, I was trying so hard to, like, do, do right. And, like, you're not even showing any kind of appreciation or you just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, what I would suggest is actually having, having a thing like a, like a secret thing between you and, and the child. So for, for me with my kids, it's a high five. So whenever they do something cool, say, Oh daddy, I did this. I was like, high five. Who's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then you say, I am. I'm like, yes, you are. So yeah. that's our thing. Okay. Yeah, so you can just sure. have your own thing, like whether a fist bump or a high five or whatever, like a, a hug. You can do your yeah, thing. And I was going to say, hugs are are so important like mm. sometimes i'll go to the schools and the younger children they just can't wait for me to hug them and i'm just like i think in the back of my mind like you know are they getting the hugs because of the way they they they're just so happy and they just can't wait to hug me and i love i love hugging i love hugging the kids i love hugging my daughter so hugging is like one of the things that some of the kids like really just need that hug even it's even if they're doing something that you have to reprimand them about you can reprimand them, but show them that you still love them. Like yeah. not like break, like not make it seem like okay. You might not like the action, but don't make it seem like you don't like them. Mm. So that it's like really important to even after you're reprimanding them to show them, you know, you did something that I didn't like, but I still love you. Give me a hug. Give me a kiss. I love you. Saying I love you is a really big deal as well. And I think like a lot of our a lot of our kids need to hear I love you you're doing great, you're awesome, you're unique, you're, you're going to do great things. And all those positive, positive feedback is, is like really key. Yeah. You know, I, I think that is absolutely critical because when we're reprimanding them, we'll say, you did this and you made me do this and you made me angry and you broke this or whatever. And there's a lot of use and the pointing the finger, etc. But what you're actually doing is you're, you're taking, you're, you're, you're kind of, taking the focus away from the situation and now the focus is on the child, mm-hmm. right? And, and then the focus, them down. Yes, exactly. When the focus is on the child, then yeah, exactly. They, 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 they will feel broken down, mm-hmm. right? But uh, yes, in the moment, in the heat of the moment, sometimes, yeah, you do get angry. I mean, we're all human. Nobody's perfect. That's mm-hmm. fine. But then afterwards, you're, you're absolutely right. It's explaining to them, look, it was just the situation. And sometimes in the situations we both have, we both, we both get heated up, right? Things, we, we say things, but yeah. guess what? I still love you at the end of the day. That does not mean I don't love you or I don't care for you. It's mm-hmm. just the fact that it was just the situation. And in that situation, we, we, we had a back and forth, but now the situation's over. We resolved the situation. I still love you. Everything is fine. And it, it might happen again in the future where something mm-hmm. like this happens and that's okay. But that does not mean I don't love you. And I think Absolutely. that's really important. Yeah. So the relationship I, is not, not strained and it's not on the line. So the child understands it was just the situation. Sorry. Absolutely. And when a child is in a home where both parents are not in the home, they tend to need that reassurance even like 10 times more. Because mm. I recently went through divorce and my daughter, before, before then, she, it, it felt like she, she knew that I love her. But now it's like, she's always asking, you know, do you still love me, mommy? Do you still, like, and sometimes, I mean, it can get frustrating, but I, I have to like take a step back and help her understand, like, I know mommy and daddy are not together, but that's not, it's not your fault. We both love you so much and there's nothing that we wouldn't do for you. It's just, you know, mommy and daddy are in two different places, but it's important for them to know that both mommy and daddy still love you and it has nothing to do with whatever it is that you might have done because there's nothing that you could do that would um result in us not loving you anymore yeah yeah i i think you're you're so right and you know nowadays there there is indeed a a growing number of households where you have a single parent Mm -hmm. um and it i think for especially for single parents you you can just imagine even with two parents like Mm -hmm. it's a lot to deal with right but with a single parent indeed you know that that is truly a, a, a very heroic feat that they that, that they're accomplishing. Um, I'm, I'm I'm actually wondering, Cindy, that maybe you can give us some advice. What advice do you have for single parents who have young children and they they they're going through everything? Obviously, they they have their own lives. They have work. They have to look after the house, pay the bills. You know, do all the other stuff, um, and still, you know, they they're trying to be good parents. What advice do you have for them? So what I would definitely suggest is that to try to make individual time for each of your children, especially if you have more than one, because sometimes there's that one child that feels neglected or feels like you don't care or that they're just, you know, a body, especially if they're like the oldest and they're watching your younger children, they feel like the babysitter and they're not really that comfortable with it, but it's like something that's forced upon them and they don't feel appreciated. So I would definitely say, you know, having that quality time with each of your children, 
um, reassuring them that you love them and thanking them for all that they do because although they are your oldest and you know they can help it's still like a, a, a challenge for them because it's like you know these are not these, these are not their children it's like they're just forced in the role of oh I'm the oldest so I have to like watch these kids and I don't want to do that but you know they, they they're trying to help and be helpful so I think it's very important to reward your older children who are helping you with the younger children and not to um, just make it seem like that's their responsibility because technically it's really not their responsibility. They mm. shouldn't be having to take on that, that type of responsibility. But, you know, seeing that the circumstances, what it is, it's, it's, it's easier to just uh, um, show the child that you appreciate what they're doing and that, you know, they mean so much to you and take the time to spend time with the older children. Cause sometimes teenagers get lost in the shuffle Cause it's like when they're, when you're, when they're born and when they get to be in kindergarten and stuff like that, parents are so like uh, protective, overprotective over their kids. And then when they get to be teenagers, sometimes it's like you fend for yourself, but they need that love and, and attention just as much as when they were younger. So I would say to try to pay attention to the things that they, they, that they like, um, uh, talk to them about stuff that they like, stuff that they're doing, um, try to like, you know, even create uh, just like dance challenges in your house, doing things f with them to create memories so that when they look back on the things that they've done in their childhood, there are those positive memories and just knowing that you care. Like that's like super important, just n knowing that their parents care. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think for children that reassurance that they get from their parents cannot be rivaled mm -hmm. other people can turn around and they say you know as your as their teachers or you know their friends or whoever it is they, they can turn around and say oh yeah you know you're great you're awesome etc etc mm -hmm. but i think the reassurance to get from their parents is is, is unrivaled yeah, it's critical. It's definitely critical. And they want to hear it. Even as they get older, they still want to hear that you love them, that they're mm -hmm. doing a good job, that they are everything to you. They want to hear that. And they, it, 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 it helps them to build their self-esteem and it helps them to make positive decisions because if they feel loved and cared, they're going to be motivated to want to do better. But if they're feeling like, I don't matter to her anyway, so who cares? Whatever I do, I do. That's, that's sometimes where the negative attitude comes and then they start to spiral and do things that they wouldn't normally do only for the simple fact that they're sometimes trying to get that attention. Like, I matter, but you don't make me feel like I'm important to you, so I'm going to do things that's going to cause you to, like, have to stop and pay attention. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, and... You know what, Cindy, I've actually I've written it down and I think you, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is something that I've, I've been thinking about and want, I've been wanting to do, but then, you know, you, life happens. But mm -hmm. definitely the individual time, I've written that down and that's something that I'm actually going to implement going forward mm -hmm. um, because I think that that is super critical. I spend a lot of the time with the kids, but it's not necessarily individual time where I, you know, we're engaged in the activity together on a one-to-one -one basis. We're usually doing mm -hmm. something all together. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's critical. And that's something I'm going to implement moving forward. And for people in the audience, I think that's also, you know, fantastic advice uh, that Cindy's given us. But Cindy, I'm going to put myself in the shoes of the moms in the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I know it's hard. Yeah, because I don't look like one and I'm not one, but I'm going to put myself in their shoes and I'm going to, I'm going to ask you this. If I'm a mom in the audience and I have a strained relationship with my daughter right now, there is some sort of friction. How can I start to turn things around? What are some of the first few steps I need to be taking and how can I start that process of bridging the gap and turning it around? Well, the first thing you want to do is be kind to your child because um, sometimes the strain relationship comes from negative feedback or just not being positive or just not being uplifted, up, uplifting. So I would say the first thing you want to do is be kind to your child and ask them some questions um, because sometimes they feel like if they talk to you, you're either not going to like let them be themselves and be true to themselves or 
you might not give them the answers like straight, you know, straightforward. So be kind, um, ask them the questions, even if it's something that they might say that might hurt your feelings or you might not be too happy about, let them be able to put that out there because if they're able to be honest with you, then that, that, that's a way to start to build on a, like a, build a foundation. But if they feel like, Oh, if I say this to mommy or if I say this to daddy, they're going to, you know, not like me or they don't want to talk to me or they don't want to hear it, then they're going to shut down. And so um, definitely be kind, ask them questions and just make time to make what matters to them matter to you. Whether it be if they're into video games, sit down and play video games with them at least once a week. If they're into um, even like Snapchat or like Instagram, if they're into that stuff, try to find a way to make it, like show them that you're interested in what they're interested in. Ask them questions, ask them, if, hey, is there anything I can do? Like, can we like, do a silly picture or can we um do something that will include both of us like even if it's like planning a day a, like on a saturday make it a, a day like plan it say on october 15th we're gonna take the morning and we're gonna do whatever it is that you want to do so let's map it out and see what it is that you want to do and we're gonna do it so just making them feel that they are important and that they that you want to hear what they have to say is like so critical because it breaks my heart to hear some of the students they're just like i can't talk to my mom like she doesn't care and i know deep down it's like i know the moms do care but they're probably just not showing it it's like they 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 do care and um they're trying their best but they're just missing the mark somewhere and if they you know sometimes you just have to like Put in that extra effort to like pay attention and and like just be a little aware and even writing because my daughter she's very shy and so um i have her write in a journal every day about her day and and then we talk about it because sometimes i'll you know ask her how was your day or what did you do today she's like fine fine and I was getting to a point where I'm like, okay, it has to be more than just fine. So one of the techniques I started to use was writing it down, writing how you're feeling down. Sometimes the, the, the kids have a hard time saying how they feel in front of your face. But if you have them write it down and then, you know, and ask for permission, say, I know you wrote this down, can I read it? Don't just take that you know just take it from them and, and, and say, well, I'm going to read it now. Because then it, it, you're shutting them down again. So you want to be open with them. You're like, you know, is it okay if I read that? And then usually they'll be like, yeah, especially with younger kids. They're like excited. So they'll be like, yeah. And then you read it and then you have a discussion and you take it from there. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Excellent advice. And I, I'll just share also that one of the great ways that you can, you can actually spend time with your kids and uh, enter their world is just asking them, you know, show me. So for example, with kids, like they might be into video games or, uh, you know, uh, like you said, Instagram or whatever, then it's just, oh, that looks cool. So can you show me how this works? Mm -hmm. and, and trust me, they'll sit down and they'll spend hours and hours and hours. And, and by the end of it, you'll know everything there is to know about Sonic Boom and Pokemon. Cause like, I know, I know, I know a lot of Pokemon <laughs> off my heart. It's great. Um, so yeah, if you just ask them, like, show me, they, they're happy. They're happy to actually share everything with you. It's fantastic. Um, and the, the second thing is also you, you, you talked about planning, planning together. And I think that's great because that shows you're, you're part of a team, mm -hmm. right? You're on the same level mm -hmm. and their opinions matter. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's, it's, it's amazing to, to do that, you know, plan the day out. Like, what are we going to do first? What are we going to do next? This weekend's coming. So Saturday, what are we going to do Saturday morning? Okay. Yeah. What should we have for and breakfast? Showing, right? Yeah. 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 It's showing that you're interested in what they're interested in and you're putting their feelings and needs first and you're helping them to feel like, oh, you actually do want to hang out with me because you're mm -hmm. not just telling me what we're going to do. We're going, we're actually coming up with something that we're going to do together and I get to tell you what I want to do and you're like receptive to it and we're like going to be able to do some things together that we both enjoy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Cindy, tell us a little bit about your online community 
Uh, tell us a little bit about Doll Girl Academy and your fantastic app, which is also called Doll Girl. Yes, absolutely. So I do have a Facebook group for moms um, on my Doll Girl app. Um, it's free to download right now. And I am, uh, I've created a pledge for the girls, uh, like I said, a check-in. They have a different check-in to have, um, Monday, through, uh, Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends they get to choose how they want to check in. Um, I'm working on different activities for mom and daughter bonding. Um, we're currently in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so I did send out a challenge for moms and daughters to attend one of the breast cancer walks together and, you know, take pictures and, you know, um, to help give back to the community and support a really great cause. Um, I'm also creating for, so my Dow Girl Academy is a 10 unit, um, course where I talk about different ways, uh, to help build self-esteem, understand the power of self-love and to, um, build their leadership skills and to also, um, help them to navigate through life and, um, conflict resolution, learning different ways, because like a lot of times girls are competing against each other. And in my program, I teach uh, working together is a lot more productive and powerful than trying to compete with one another. So um, that, those are some of the things that I, I, I discuss in my, um, my programs. And so from on my Dow Girl app, there's a, a lot of it is, is geared towards the, the daughters, but it also connects the moms to my uh, Facebook group where there's um, different activities going on and um, different discussions and stuff in, in our Facebook group for our moms. And our moms are able to check in as well and do some of the activities that the girls are able to do. So I'm like super excited. Um, the app had just launched last month. Um, we're in the beta, beta testing phase. So I'm looking for um, all the feedback because um, I want to create, I want to make the app the best that it can be. And I want to uh, reach between now and the end of next year, I want to reach at least a thousand girls nationwide and create a, a really um, united community with girls and helping them to understand that, you know, the power lies in unity and not in competing. I think that's a beautiful message. And Cindy, I, I think this, this really needs to be at a global level. And I'm sure that in the long term, that's what you're planning. Because I hope you are, because yeah. <laughs> I, I think it, it, it really can benefit a lot of people all over the world. Um, Absolutely. So, yes, thank you for sharing that. Um, this has been an absolutely amazing conversation. You know what? I'd love to stay on for the next X amount of hours and <laughs> dive deep and discuss all the other things, but time obviously restricts us. So can you quickly tell us how people can reach out to you? Where can they find you and how can they find out more about your app and your community and Dog Girl Academy? Sure. So if you go to my website, it's dollgirlsquad at um, dot com, doll, which is my website. My um, email is dollgirlsquad at gmail.com. And you could also find me on Instagram at Doll Girl Squad. So everything um, is Doll Girl Squad. And then once you go to my website, you'll be able to um, find the different communities and, and, and even gain access to the, to the app that way as well. Beautiful. So guys, there you have it. Our conversation with Cindy J. Cadet. What an awesome conversation was that? Okay. <laughs> like Cindy was so open. She shared lots of her stories and her uh, experiences and I shared quite a lot of my own I mean this was just so open so relaxed we felt comfortable sharing that stuff with you so I hope yeah. you find value with it I think there were some real golden nuggets in this conversation is if you're a parent and especially if you are a mom with a daughter then this is absolutely the conversation for you so tell us in the comments below what what were the golden nuggets for you for me like I said individual time that's a big one I'm going to be acting on that moving forward what will you be employing going forward with your kids with your daughter and also guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel so first of all you can stay up to date with all the other future amazing conversations with other amazing guests but also you get entered into the monthly channel competition where you get a chance to win access to my new networking strategies course where I share with you all the strategies that I have used to find, connect and build relationships with the best of the best in the world. So if you want to know all those strategies, 
hit the subscribe button down below and leave a comment okay on this video or any other video on the channel as long as you get a notification of your subscription and your videos and finally guys make sure that you pay it forward the biggest compliment you can give me and cindy is just to pay it forward uh, just pass it on to other people who need to hear this who might be parents who might be potential parents and how awesome would that be that you share it with them and it helps them find that one thing that changes the relationship between them and their child Definitely. Cindy, thanks for being here. This was an awesome conversation. Let's do Thank round two sometime. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate this time with you. Awesome. Guys, stay awesome, hustle hard, and I will catch you in the next one.